Well, here we go then, folks. I've not long had Mr. Courier Man from Round My Way at the door. He's dropped off a little pre-order delivery for me. Uh, this was from Hasbro Pulse. It's a Marvel Legends VHS X-Men animated series Cyclops figure. Very, very excited to have this in hand, but also a little bit sad. A little bit sad because they announced at PulseCon this year that this was going to be the last one in the line for a little while. So it's bittersweet, bittersweet, because I'm excited to have a new figure, especially this one, which is a whole new uh, kind of redesign on the Cyclops fig, new body and everything. So that's super exciting and super fun. Uh, also very pleased to expand my display, my X-Men animated display, but feeling a little sad and let down that... This excitement is going to be some ways off again for a little while. But here it is. So let's have a quick look at the packaging. It's the uh, classic VHS retro design that we've seen with all the figures. I love this. I love the kind of nostalgia feel in hand. I mean, it really does just feel like the old VHS is used to feel. We've got this tremendous Dan Wiesenmeyer artwork on the front of the box there. I've said it with all of them, really dynamic, telling a little story, got lots of energy, usually showcasing the superpowers of the character, and it's no different here with the Cyclops figure. Uh, the logo, the name of the fig, we've got the little retro Marvel comics with the character's head in the corner, which was a bit of a hallmark of the comic books at the time. Then we've got the profile shot on the side, the logo, the name again, and the little cute touch that I always draw attention to when I review these. I like that. It's like back in the day, the uh, production company, the video cassette producer, and these little cutaways to mirror the old thumb tabs that used to be in the cardboard sleeved VHSs. Love that. Lovely touch. Lovely touch. Then on the back here, we've got the digital render of the Cyclops figure. A little write-up here in various different languages, bit of blurb. Scott Summers, a.k.a. Cyclops, is one of Xavier's very first students and fights tirelessly for Xavier's dream as the X-Men field leader. Uh, all the legal bollocks and whatnot there. More legal bollocks and whatnot across the bottom. Bit of advertising for the plastic-free packaging. More logo action on the top. Right then, let's get this bad boy open. I've popped the tape in preparation for making this video. Um, because it's plastic-free packaging, he's in this kind of cardboard frame stylus thing uh, to hold the figure. Uh, nothing else in the box there. Oh, paperwork. A uh, little baggie here with some of the accessories. I think this is swappable hands, if I remember correctly. It is. little selection of swappable hands there. Just check the bag's empty before I throw it over my shoulder. And uh, then the figure himself. So you can sort of fold these cardboard little frame bits out like that to release him. He was being pinned down by the shoulders there. And then we'll get Cyclops taken out the bag. Here we go. Yeah, and there we go. That's it. That's, that's all the goodies on that one. And there we are. There's the Cyclops looking all fine and field leadery. All ready for action, so I'm going to go away and have a bit of a play, get him posed up with some of my other animated X-Men, see how he compares, take a closer examination of the aesthetic, see what the cell shading looks like, all that good stuff. Well, that's a stiff butterfly joint there, Cyclops. Uh, always the same, isn't it? When I open it up, I can't. I'm immediately into the figure, hands-on, just like dead activist, and got to play straight away. But no, I'm going to stop and do my little... Uh, segue into the next section so i'm gonna go away and have a play and i'll be back in a couple of days to share my review thoughts so i'll see you guys in just a couple of seconds stick around and here we go here is the marvel legends x-men animated series retro vhs cyclops figure it's been a few days now i've been away had a play been posing him up enjoying my time with uh, possibly in terms of character my least favorite x-men character but also arguably one of the most distinctive characters you know that's associated with the team with the x-men brand uh and necessary to kind of really tie together an x-men display um so uh, my thoughts and feelings of the actual personality of cyclops and uh, his role to play in some of the storylines that i've read in the comic books or his attitude <laughs> and behavior in the cartoon uh, here he is 
Uh, so definitely a much needed and excellent addition to the collection. I'm now ready to share a few review thoughts, so uh, stick around to hear what I think of the figure. And if you're new around these parts, just a very quick rundown. A Mod Extra Games and Collectibles review follows a very simple structure I call the three A's. The first A, or first section of the video, if you like, will be about the aesthetic. Let's talk about how the Cyclops looks. And then we're going to move into the second day, the second segment of the video, which is articulation, and talk about how he moves, how poseable he is, what kind of positions you can get him into. And then the third and final A is added value and extras. So uh, let's have a look at the accessories and extra bits and bobs that they've thrown in with the figure to, you know, give us some bang for our buck. Or not, as the case often is with Marvel Legends. And we'll get into that later on in the vid. So yeah, that's that's the main structure. Um, let's not dilly-dally around then. Let's get into it. Let's talk about Cyclops' aesthetic. So aesthetically, as far as being a part of the X-Men animated series you know, retro VHS line, he's this is a Marvel Legends figure that looks the part. He looks like your mind's eye recollection, you know, your nostalgic memory of what the character looked like in the cartoon. And and pretty accurate comic book accurate to be fair. The the, the two mirror each other a great deal, the cartoon and the comic book. Um, aesthetic of Cyclops, um, certainly from the sort of Jim Lee 90s era, is the same. So the colour scheme, you know, the blues and yellows are exactly as you associate with the Cyclops figure. The, obviously the visor, which is a key characteristic connected to the way his powers work that you associate with him. I mean, he's called Cyclops. That's why he's called Cyclops, you know. Um, that's all there. He's got all the, the kind of uh, X-Men team icons and symbols on his uniform uh, the shade of blue feels right the shade of yellow feels right uh, the way his uh, his uh, brown hair is it, you know it's all adding up it's all adding up it is an animated series figure so it's got the cell shading but the overall visual experience is yeah pretty decent he's the right size right shape right color he looks like how you picture cyclops if you were a 90s comic book fan or you're the more, more relevantly an x-men animated series fan so lots of lots to like in that respect it's just i suppose like many superheroes you know he's in boots and pants over the top of a superhero jumpsuit that's very limited in terms of color palette and that's not really marvel legends's fault is it <laughs> Bringing him a bit closer to go for a you know a, uh, a more finer examination of the aesthetic qualities, the aesthetic detail of the character. You're, there's a lot to like, you know, when you get really close up to the figure. Um, the hair, for example, is a good solid sculpt. Lots of texture and depth in there. Uh, it doesn't have a, a wash, but I think that's a, a an intentional omission because they're kind of going for a more solid solid bodied color uh, that's in line with the uh, cartoon aesthetic cartoon look and feel uh, but yeah it's a good sculpt i like that it's kind of a little disheveled like it's all blowing in the wind in the midst of action uh, and that ties together really nicely uh, with some of the swappable hands that i'll be showing you in the accessories section of the video uh, but yeah i like that it's kind of blowing in the wind he's known for being a bit of a, a boy scout his cyclops isn't he a bit kind of very on the straight and narrow a bit bland even but uh regardless of that in the midst of battle even his hair even cyclops's hair gets a bit mussed up you know what i mean the uh, the side part in there isn't quite as tightly combed down when he needs to blast some villains with his eye cannon so that's good he does however suffer from the frequent marvel legends problem that i'm going on about all the time and that is a very bland expression when it comes to the face sculpt i don't really understand understand what the sculpting team over at marvel legends uh, what they're thinking what what the mindset is around that because once again there's nothing about the way that his facial expression is you know and it's well sculpted the cheekbones the chin the nose you know the the actual facial features are well sculpted there's no question about it but there's no expression there's no story being told there i can't tell a story with that uh, and particularly when the swappable hands again i'll talk about those in the accessory section but that they are clearly designed to encourage more action-based posing uh, and the articulation as well when we talk about that is designed for more action-based posing but uh he's just you know like like he's watching a really boring movie there's just nothing going on there which you could argue i suppose cyclops 
he can be a bit of a blander character. Um, but uh, just come on, Hasbro. Do something a little bit more with your Marvel Legends facial expressions. I want to tell stories with my figures on display. And this guy, once again, like, like he's got all his windy, disheveled hair. And then he's just like, hmm. Interesting. It's like, what? Come on. <laughs> it does my nutting. Aesthetically as well, we've got you know all the kind of key trappings and trimmings of a X Men out in the field, an X Men character out in the field. This uh, is a mold like the straps here across his shoulder, um, with his little kind of I don't know what that is a torch communicator button, whatever. Uh, but it's yeah, it's got some nice detail in it. It's a decent yellow. And this is a nice touch. I like the way they've put the strap molded on top of um the uh, actual body piece it's not painted on but molded on but with a, a line that goes into the ab crunch there so it doesn't matter how much you've got him crunched down the strap looks sort of naturally you know that's a really nice touch very pleased with that uh, but yeah you can see uh, you know the pouches they've got little pop studs on them and a bit of detail in there you got the red and black splash of color as well as the uh, flick of red in his visor adding a little bit more to the to break up the blue and yellow kind of body of the scheme. Uh, also very pleased aesthetically to find that these uh, thigh straps that he wears, for no apparent reason, there's not even a pocket or a pouch on them, but these thigh straps, again, are moulded into the figure. They're not loose, so they're not kind of um, uh, f a bit fidgety, a bit fiddly, uh, sliding up and down, getting in the way of your thigh cut and what have you. They're nicely moulded into the figure line. And then the boots are, you know, just nice standard yellow. But he's framed well, you know. The yellow and the blue are well balanced. I mean, again, that's not really Marvel Legends. They've just followed the design as per the kind of 90s Cyclops aesthetic, but he's well balanced. He, the colours are good. The paint applications are neat and tidy, which with Marvel Legends isn't always the case. You know, I've not come across any kind of aesthetic QC issues with paint pills. Spaint pills? <laughs> paint spills. Just swapping my letters all around there for a minute. Um, so, yeah, aesthetically, he's... All right, he's fine, he's good, he's, he looks like Cyclops, you know. Overall, that's what you want. Uh, the cell shading is an interesting aesthetic element. I know that that can be a bit of a polarizing element uh, when it comes to this particular VHS retro line. Uh, at times, it can be quite subtle, you know. I had to really sort of closely inspect the figure and go, oh, yeah, there's a bit of cell shading, you know, in preparation for making this video because I knew it'd be something people would want to know about. Like the side of the visor there, this side you can see it's kind of cell shaded off, whereas this side is in the full yellow. There's a bit that comes down the neck and over the shoulder there. You can sort of just see it on the shoulder strap. And there's a little bit down the side of the arms. It's quite subtle here. Uh, you know, underneath his armpit, just there, and quite subtle on the abs. Uh, but then you can see it very clearly on the yellow elements of his uh, uniform like a, a flash across his trunks there and then down across the thighs and over the top of these yellow straps and down the boots uh, i mean it, it's quite subtle really with cyclops certainly the blue cell shading in certain lights and if you're colorblind like me like that down there just don't notice at all just doesn't stand out to me at all i've had to look for it to find it for the purposes of this video if you know what i mean um so that's all fine it's quite subtle the uh, choice to sell shade sort of down his thighs here like this and across the trunks is a bit questionable. There was a pose I had him in the other day and I was like, oh, it looks like he's, you know, had a bit of an accident there. Have you been in the field for a long time, Cyclops? Are these X-Men uniforms a little bit difficult to get in and out of? You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, it's sort of down there. It looks like maybe, maybe Cyclops has had... A little bit of bladder control problems or has finally met his match and got too afraid of a particular villain or something. Uh, so, yeah, be careful posing, guys, because this this one here on the inside thigh, on the left leg, when stood in a certain way, can look like, you know, there's been a bit of leakage. So, yeah, the cell shading is, of all the animated X-Men figures, uh, on Cyclops is probably one of the more subtle uh, than on others and uh, you know it kind of makes sense they've set it definitely set him up in a way where because one of the things about the cell shading that i've criticized is that sometimes you're like where's the light coming from what's the i don't really get what they're going for with this whereas with cyclops you can obviously see that the light source they've envisioned is coming from this direction and the more shadowy elements are sort of across 
the right hand side of the figure which isn't always the case with some of the others so yeah and the cell shading i know that's something people would have wanted me to have talked about i'm less bothered by it I, you know i'm just mixing up comic book and and cartoon cell shaded characters without a care in the world which i know will give some folks a few shivers out there and uh, so it, it bothers me less but uh, particularly with cyclops it's quite subtle, actually. I don't, I don't think it stands out as much as it has done on previous kind of animated figure aesthetics. So, in conclusion, aesthetically, it's a thumbs up. I mean, what else can I give it? I can't see, as there's many ways you could get Cyclops aesthetically wrong in some respects, as long as you've got, you know, blue jumpsuit, yellow accessories and trimmings, laser red visor and brown hair you can't go wrong they've put detail and sculpting where they can you know the musculature looks good the uh, disheveled hair looks good the finer detail on his little 90s pouch collection um all solid the buckles on the on the straps and the like the wrists and things yeah it's, it's all working um so i've got nothing but positive things to say the cell shading's nice and subtle if you do want to kind of uh, combine that in a, a more comic book accurate display over uh, over a animated series specific display um, yeah i've got nothing but good things to say about it it works for me it's yeah it's rock solid right uh, on to articulation then let's talk about how he moves and I've got to say, folks, as far as articulation goes, in terms of what you can do with Cyclops, yeah, this dude is a pretty decent mover. You know, he's got... Uh, this is the Vulcan book, I think. Uh, the, uh, those who get under the skin of the finer detail of this uh, kind of background stuff will let me know if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think it's the Vulcan book. Uh, but there's lots of points of articulation, lots that you can do, and I've actually managed to move him around into some quite interesting poses. Uh, starting with the head, then, it's the ball at the top and the hinge... Uh, on the neck so you've got good down good up really good up lots of decent left and right in fact you can go all the way around in your exorcist and he's got some swivel and tilt movement in there so lots of things you can do with the head which i think is super important with a character like cyclops where the focus the focal point of his powers is you know he's shooting laser beam blasts from his eyes so uh, good head articulation is an absolute minimum must i would argue uh, but yeah lots of good stuff going on there then a really solid, great uh, butterfly joint in the uh, shoulder there. A little bit stiff and gummy mine, even now sort of. How, when did I unbox him? Th three days ago. So, yeah, that one that one's loosened up a bit, but it's still a bit stiff and gummy. But it'll kind of come with time or, you know, I'll get around to putting a bit of heat on it. But, yeah, the butterfly joint is really solid, really good. A lot of nice bit of shuffle, shoulder shuffle. And then there's a hinge in that shoulder, which gives you a nice T, gets you up to there. We've got the standard swivel there at the top of the bicep and tricep. The standard double elbow with a good range of motion, uh, like so. But rock solid, that there. And then the hands are the standard pegged, uh, you know, peg hole situation, which gives you wrist swivel. And um, both the hands, left and right, have got a hinge going forward and back like that. At least with the standard hands. Uh, we'll take a closer look at the um, swappable hands in a moment. Good ab crunch as well, you know, all the way forward like that, all the way back. And as I mentioned in the aesthetic section, the new uh, approach and design to the strap across the bottom there means you've not got any weird bunching up sticky outy straps and things, which I'm really appreciative of. And then uh, there's hip swivel here, uh, just below the belt line above the, uh, you know, his underpanties line there. And it's the same, you know, leg articulation we've seen with the newer male figures now as well. So uh, decent forward, definitely some good outlook at that Russian ballet nearly. Uh, Cyclops is nearly there. He makes up for it in kind of funky rhythm, though, I'm sure. Um, decent forward. Uh, the back's not so good. Again, the, the mould of the arse cheeks, uh, as is often the case, gets in the way with your back there. Swivel at the top of the thigh there, which is also nicely disguised by the uh, thigh straps line, which is a nice aesthetic element. Solid double knee up to about there. Swivel at the top of the boot, just below this, um, this, this kind of uh, calf strap thing he's got going on. And then the standard Hasbro hinge and rocker for the feet. So really, I don't feel like I've got any other choice but to say, yeah, another thumbs up for Cyclops there. He articulates pretty good. Uh, it's becoming the new standard for Marvel Legends, although uh, I hesitate to say that because they're still punting out figures on 
older books, aren't they? But yeah, it's the it's the new standard. It works well for Cyclops. I've managed to get him into some kind of nice dynamic stuff, uh, especially uh, with my recent addition to the shelf, the uh, the retro card back Beast, who's got some really nice points of articulation, and uh, him and Wolverine and Jean Grey. Yeah, I've got some good stuff going on. So the range of mobility, the poses, the stability of the figure, all good, solid, decent. Yeah, I've got nothing but good things to say about the articulation too, so another thumbs up there. Uh, well done, Hasbro. Uh, so Cyclops is actually, <laughs> for what is a fairly, what you would call like the, the core uniform standard of 90s X-Men look and feel, he's actually doing quite well in terms of ref review points here, isn't he? Lots in the pros column. And so let's see how, whether we can make it three for three, moving into the accessories and added value section. And that would be a resounding nope. This is where Marvel Legends falls down once again because with Cyclops we have just these three swappable hands. No more, no less, just three swappable hands. That's right, you heard me correct. Just three, not four, no symmetry there, no balance we can change. Two hands on one side but just one hand on the other and that's it, that's all you're getting. That's all you got for your extra couple of quid stroke buck stroke euros that you've paid for the pleasure of having him in a VHS retro box. I'm not going to bang on about it. Go back and watch some of my previous reviews. The phrase added value that I used to kind of um, title this category, this segment of my reviews, really does not apply to Marvel Legends because that is pitiful. That That is a joke for the price you paid and for what you would be seeking to do with your Cyclops figure. Getting three hands like this is frankly a piss take. I mean, like a major piss take. But there's plenty of people out there that you can go and watch if you want some like massive ranty YouTube drama over the price of the price hikes and uh, accessor limited accessories. All I'm going to say is that yeah, they're, they're decent, but that's all you've got. So we've got this one here on the left arm there. It's the usual Marvel Legends, you know, on a peg, pop it out, put the new one in. Uh, but this is the two-fingered temple touch. Uh, but yeah, that's the one I've been using in most of my photos. It's probably the most dynamic, really, of the hands uh, in the sense of something, uh, an accessory that can help you tell that story and have a, a kind of, you know, a visual element um, in the accessories that ties into uh, a notable characteristic, something that you, you know about the character, you know, fo the focal point being this eye beam power in his visor so that's that's decent enough um they've only given us one uh, i, I kind of get it in the sense of well his button on his visor is on one side so you only get one hand doing the button pressy thing but there's been a couple of times when i've been posing him and i've been like nah, I'd, I'd like the temple touch on this side please and the other two hands are these open palmed ones here again just pop them out with the pegs peg the new ones in uh, so you can make him look like he's shrugging and going yeah i don't know I don't know. Or if you want to pose him, you know, looking like he's walking along a tightrope going, whoa, whoa, you know, balancing himself with his hands. Or even, tragedy, when the feeling's gone and you can't go on, it's tragedy. So, yeah, you, you, you may only get three hands, but I suppose you can do stuff with them. So, yeah, what, what you get in terms of accessories and added value with Cyclops is, I mean, it's decent enough, it's all right, I suppose, but it's limited in scope, there's not a great deal of it, you, you're getting, you know, it's not added value at all, it's limited value in every sense of the word, uh, it's limited as well in terms of imagination and scope, it's not helping me tell stories or enhance my action figure experience, you know, Wolverine at least came with the gene, you know, the meme photo frame so there was a bit of, of a sense of humor about it and you could replicate that famous scene and uh, i don't know it just yeah it's like touch your temple clench your fists hold your palms out bish bash bosh done that'll suit them that'll do them and it's just simply not good enough with when you look at the price that we're asking for for this you know special edition retro edition range on um, the cardboard box is, is fun but and nostalgic but it's not worth the extra price so yeah I, I mean one thing i would be curious about actually if there's anyone out there who's got a vhs cyclops and has maybe got one of the older cyclops who's got some of the eye you know the visor based accessories like the shootout blast uh that, that's come with the you know with the full-headed cowl version 
of Cyclops. Or I think, a, is there a previous figure who's had like a little sort of a clip-on bit that fits in the visor slot there uh, that's sort of sparkling at the edges, got a little flick of energy showing at the sides. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've seen that. So if anyone's out and about there, uh, got the some of the, the, the visor laser blast previous accessories with uh, another uh, uh, previous Cyclops release, then let me know. I'd be really curious to know about that because I don't have uh, any... This is my first and only Cyclops at this moment in time, uh, and I would have been interested to know whether the groove in that visor is deep enough to, to hold some of the older Cyclops Cyclops accessories because I think I've seen a few going for pretty cheap in some sales so yeah let me know in the comments down below but yeah the accessories range is 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 disappointing I think I would have liked something going on in terms of visor accessories um or a wider selection of hands or summit I don't know but yeah thumbs down on accessories Couple of comparison shots now. Here's Cyclops with Jean Grey, an obvious display pairing, you know, for obvious reasons as well. You know, they're, they're one of those kind of up and down romances, comic book romances for the ages, but there was certainly uh, that love triangle um, was definitely a big part of the cartoon storyline so an obvious pairing there uh you can see yeah they tie together well staying with that line here is the mr sinister figure from the vhs retro uh cell shade you know x-men animated series marvel legends line god how many words can you put into a line uh so yeah here's mr sinister you can see the sort of height and build difference between the two uh but the these uh, to me, are quite an obvious sort of shelf pairing as well for some displays and some photography stuff uh, that I've been doing because, you know, that whole narrative, that whole storyline of Sinister trying to steal Cyclops' genetics. What I was saying about the subtlety of cell shading on Cyclops compared to the subtlety of cell shading here on Sinister, I think it's like super in your face on Sinister compared to Cyclops. And when you get them side by side, you can really see what I was saying a bit earlier on. Here's Cyclops with a non-cell shaded X-Men figure that I own. This is my retro card back Gambit here. Uh, even despite the, uh, the the kind of single elbow situation with Gambit, he still remains one of my favourites and uh, one of my most poseable figures that I have a lot of fun with. But you can see there uh, next to each other, the cell shading on Cyclops doesn't stand out against the non-cell shading of Gambit and vice versa. You know, I feel like if you're going for a non-cell shaded display, comic book accurate display, that works and vice versa i've i've had gambit in amongst my animated x-men to fill that gap and um, i think i mentioned before <laughs> early on in the video that i've been doing some stuff with cyclops with my wolverine and beast figure uh, beast and wolverine in fact still in the poses that i had them uh, that I was using for the photographs that I was taking. So you can see there, uh, the three of them together. This is the X-Men animated series Wolverine, but this is the recent uh, retro card back beast here. So you can kind of see how a mixed display could work with cell shading, non-cell shading. Although I would argue that this beast has got a bit of an animated series cell shade vibe about him anyway. But there you go. That's That was the, the thing I was doing. I had a cityscape background uh, on them. So, yeah, fun times. Re really enjoying myself. Man-child playtime. You know what I'm all about. And here we are. Here is Cyclops making his way around the turntable in the, I suppose, what is the obvious and traditional pose that I've had him in now for a huge chunk of the photos I've taken and on the... A short amount of kind of shelf display time that I've had over the last couple of days. So, yeah, I mean, overall, uh, he's he moves good. He looks decent if you're not bothered by cell shading, which I'm not. He doesn't look decent if you are bothered by cell shading, aside from the fact that he appears to have pissed his pants. But uh, overall, he's a decent figure. It's just the same usual stuff. I mean, uh, it's getting a bit repetitive now, Hasbro. Come on, do, give me some new stuff to complain about when it comes to your lines. Because I want better facial expressions. They're so bland and expressionless. It's boring now come on do something with it and the added value the accessory selection is just pitiful it's a joke especially for the price we're paying and especially as a guy who collects gi joe classified i know folks i know i've said it so many times before but i love that line so much and one of the contributing factors is all that added value all the goodies and extras that can help you tell stories with your figures i'm just like yeah that's a great pose and that's how i visualize cyclops you know 
fingers on temples, shooting blasts of energies out of his eyes. It works, but I ain't got no energy blast accessories. I ain't got an expression that makes it look like he's in the midst of combat with a sentinel, even though his hair is all kind of windswept and disheveled as if he is. And it's just, you know, it's those little disappointments. They accumulate, and they're accumulating a great deal with Marvel Legends, and there is, they've especially accumulated from a guy who has collected the whole VHS line. Mad nostalgic fan of the animated series and this is what i've got so yeah well actually he's quite poseable he looks decent enough he's playing the part it's just not the package it should be so there we go well there's my final thoughts if you've enjoyed the video today then i would encourage you and ask please do head on down below and give the video a like and if you're not subscribed to the channel but you enjoy thorough reviews of this nature then i'm definitely the channel for you uh, i would also argue that if you're a massive adult child nerd like me who worships at the broad church of nerdum and has a wide range of interests when it comes to action figures collectibles comic books statues trading cards then this would be a good place to subscribe to because uh, i like a bit of variety i'm i'm a nerd variety guy when it comes to the games and collectibles that i put out there oh no i've timed that wrong see now cyclops's back is facing the camera just at the moment i wanted to go into the little you know thanks for watching see you later folks come back soon so i'm just gonna fill 20 seconds now maybe i need to get a turntable that's got a bit of a faster spin or some changing speeds or something i don't know i suppose i could have cut it but i felt like the cut would look weird so they are, boys and girls, right at the end there, a little glimpse at how the sausage are made. But yes, I hope you enjoyed my Cyclops review. Thanks so very much for watching. I appreciate you choosing Mod Extra Games and Collectibles. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you later, folks. Ta-ta now. <laughs> what a crap out. Outro, Chris. Bloody hell. <laughs>